Hey folks, Callan here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you how and when to use multiband compression on your mix bus. We're gonna be going over multiband compression today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process as a whole and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist. It's a simple PDF that will guide you through the entire mixing process, step by step, to help you get professional and radio-ready mixes without the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide, and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at multiband compression. To start off here, let me play what the mix currently sounds like so you get an idea of what we're working with, and then we're gonna start messing with the multiband dynamics plugin here. So that's the Studio One multiband compressor on our mix bus here. So across the entire mix, multiband compression. Here's what our mix currently sounds like. So about rounding things off here on the mix, about done with this. Now is when you wanna put on multiband compression. If you're gonna reach for a multiband compressor on your mix bus, across your mix, always do it towards the end of the mixing session. Never, and I mean never put it in at the beginning of your mix. I used to mix through a multiband compressor, but what that does is it's always gonna hold things down and it's gonna unbalance whatever decisions you make. So if we have a multi-band compressor in and it's doing three bands, which is what I usually do, say you boost up a frequency range trying to find something that's bad. Your multi-band compressor is gonna knock that down, making your other two bands sound louder to even things out. That is not what you want. That's gonna mess with your ears and that's gonna mess with your balance across your mix. Get your mix set, get it shaped, get towards the end of your session, before you throw something that big and that widespread effectiveness across your mix bus. Multiband dynamics has a huge impact on anything you put it on, especially across an entire mix. So if you put it on your mix bus, err on the side of the end of your session rather than the beginning of your session. I know I said never, never, I know, blanket statement, right? But just be careful, okay? If you do put it on at the beginning, just keep in mind that when you're doing big boosts, you're going into that multiband compressor. That compressor is squashing those boosts down and holding that down when you push into it. So keep that in mind as you work with something like multiband dynamics. Now we're gonna throw it on here. I'm gonna put it before my tape machine. I always like to have the tape machine at the end of the chain, kind of like you're mixing down to tape at the end of your session. What I used to use on my mix bus, I haven't used it in quite a while. I've kind of erred more towards uh, the fat channel compressor and a tape machine on my mix bus, uh, but sometimes I still do throw this on. It's a nice balancing uh, and a nice shaping of your mix frequency-wise as well as balance-wise. This is the setting I used to start with. So it's three bands here. Our low band is from 0 to 160. So that's this guy here, down here. So 0 to 160 hertz. We got a 2 to 1 ratio, 100 millisecond attack. 100 millisecond release, so a very slow attack. Don't wanna be aggressive here, especially on different frequency ranges at the end of our mix session or across our entire mix. Then the mid band here is 160 hertz to 2.5K. Same kind of deal here, two to one ratio, 100 millisecond attack, 100 millisecond release. So not holding on too long, not letting go too fast. Last one here is 2.5K and above, so two and a half K and above. Those are our three separate bands, and again, same settings here. Two to one ratio, 100 millisecond attack, 100 millisecond release. Our global settings is uh, 1.5 knee overall, and I believe I used to have a dB of gain on the output overall as well. So same kind of deal as what I usually use with uh, my mix bus compressor here. The threshold is something I never touch. I always have it set at negative 20 dB across the mix here. So edit all relative on is on, which means all of these bands 
move together. But I'll show you what happens as we go further down or turn it off. We're gonna start here without it and then I'm gonna kick it in, listen to how our balance changes a little bit and listen to how our frequencies get shaped a little bit by this multi-bend. What I hear when I kick this in is that it's doing a lot of work on our mid-range. It's not getting rid of our mid-range. It actually feels like there's more balance across the mix when I kick this in rather than it being mid-range heavy. The most compression here is happening in this mid-band, so 160 hertz to 2.5K. So when I kick this in, our low end gets a little bit bigger and our top end gets so much more airy and so much more open. That's what's coming from this multi-band compressor. That's what I feel. What I mean by balance is that there's different levels of compression happening at each band here. So as I get my mix built, I have you know different frequency balances across the mix, but when I put this in, it's gonna balance everything overall. So take a listen one more time, and I want you to pay attention to the amount of gain reduction we have as I cycle through each band here. So we'll start with the low band. Watch the gain reduction meter here. I'll flip to the mid band. Again, keep your eye here, and then the high band Keep your eye on that gain meter there, starting at the low band here. Notice where that boost in the high end is coming from. We have no compression going on on that top end there. So that's where we're getting that lift on the top end. So when I finished my mix here, maybe I was lacking a little bit in the top end or I didn't have enough high end energy in there. So it's taking a little bit out on the mid range, a little bit on the, out on the low end, and we get some more top end from it. On the low end here, notice that we're getting our compression when our kick and bass hit big and heavy on our ones. So you'll notice when we have our bigger bass hits on our ones and they line up with our kick, so we have our kick energy and our bass guitar energy hitting at the same time, that's when we're getting a little bit of compression on our low band here. So it's tightening that up a little bit, enhancing the relationship we have in our low end. And then in our mid range, we're getting the most compression when everything is happening. So it's keeping our balance even as we have instruments come in and out. That's why you have to be careful if you put this in at the beginning of your mix, because your balance will change frequency-wise as you add new instruments. So you could get your drums in, your bass in, and maybe your rhythm guitars in, and be like, okay, I have a great balance. Then you pull your vocal in, and suddenly you added another thing pushing into this multi-band compressor, and your balance changes overall, your frequencies change overall. That's why it's something you have to be careful with, and I like to save it till the end now when I put it in. Because if it's gonna change my entire mix overall, I don't wanna have to go back and suddenly tweak my drums again or suddenly tweak my bass guitar again because I added one new element to the mix. That's why you have to be careful with this, okay? So pulling everything down evenly like this is gonna help straighten out your balances a little bit. So when I was finished with this mix, this is adding a little bit more top end. It's controlling our mid range when you notice when the background vocals come in with our lead vocal, with all the guitars, everything's going at once. We get a little bit more reduction in our mid-range because there's more energy there. Then as our background vocals disappear, let's go a little bit. So it keeps our balance, keeps our song even frequency-wise as well as balance-wise. So between the instruments there in our mid-range. One more time, let me do an A-B here on the multi-band compressor. Take a listen one more time.
only doing about 3 dB reduction overall here on our mix bus, so across the entire mix. If you're gonna pull multi-band compression in on your mix bus, be gentle and air on the side, air towards the end of your mix, not the beginning of your mix. I hope that was helpful for you today. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.